Welcome to the Accelerate Church weekly broadcast. We are so glad you tuned in and we believe you'll be strengthened and encouraged as Pastor Jeremy File continues his sermon series on the basis of the word. Get a notebook, get a pen, get your Bible and be ready to receive right now as we tune in to this service already in progress. Truth is a requirement for freedom. You live in a free country, but as I showed you last week, this country was founded on the basis of the Word. That's the reason I took time to tell you that last week and go through it. Several people told me, Pastor, I enjoyed the civics class. That was not my intent to take you back to school. But just to briefly touch on the fact that this nation was founded on the basis of the Word. You can disagree with that, and you'll be wrong because that's how it was founded. And we've been slipping off that course now. We have been, but here we are, the church, and I've got to preach it to you because if we, the conscience of the nation, don't have the parameters of the word and look at politics and everything else on the basis of the word, then we are building our own standard, and let me tell you, the end of that is destruction. It always has been, and it always will be if you build your own plumb line and you just eye and say, that looks straight to me. It's crooked, I promise. Just because it looks straight to you doesn't make it straight. What makes it straight is it's in the Word of God. Praise God. Well, truth is required for freedom. This nation cannot continue to be a free nation without understanding the truth. Jesus said in John 17, verse 17, your word, Father, is truth. So a person that's actually free is a person who walks in the truth. And I'll, just, I'll tell it to you this way. Those who walk in the most truth are the ones that stay under the most influence of the word of God. <laughs> it's just the fact. Those that are the freest people are those that have the most influence of the Word of God coming into their life on a daily basis. Speaking of the Word, say, thank God for the Word. Thank God for the word. Go to John chapter 8. Here we go today. I'm excited. John chapter 8, the Word of God is alive and well. <laughs> I told my friends from Tennessee, another friend there from Iowa, another friend from uh, Seattle area. I said, y'all need to get all these trees out of the way so I can see something. I'm from the Panhandle High Plains. i got to have the plains out here and see for miles. They said, do you like that? I said, I love that. <laughs> pastor Chris McMichael, you know, geologist before he was a pastor, he likes to go cave diving. I say he's nuts. <laughs> he said, look at this picture. And he's like sandwiched between rocks where he's having to crawl through. He said, I actually had to hold my breath to crawl through that. I said, no thanks. Give me the plains where I can... Ah, take a deep breath. I don't want to crawl under some rock somewhere. I didn't tell him this. I ain't made to be a cockroach. Neither is he. Praise God. John chapter 8. Let's go. We got to look at the word this morning. (laughs) Now, the reason I said all that, several of his folks said that they listen to the services that we put out on the internet. So they'll hear that and they'll go back and report that. I love Pastor Chris McMichael. John chapter 8, verse 30. I love the word of God more than I love anything. As Jesus spoke these words, many believed in him. And there's revelation in this right out the gate. If you're going to believe in Jesus, you're going to have to hear somebody tell you about it. (laughs) How will they believe unless someone sent and preaches to them, right? Just kind of shortening Romans chapter 11 there. Excuse me, Romans chapter 12. But here's John 8. He says, Jesus speaking. He spoke some words. Many... Not a few. I want you to catch this. Many believed in him. So this, I would have to say, is similar to what I'm experiencing today. I came to preach here in the church that I pastor, and many of you believe that I'm going to feed you the word. In fact, I'll just ask, how many came expecting to receive the word today? So see, you'll believe that when I point to this, yeah, this is the word of God. And so I want you to catch this because it was an environment where many believed. That's what it says. And we're just full of doubters and haters Everything, but it was people that believed. Then, verse 31, a very familiar verse, especially if you come to church here. Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him. Now, who was he talking to? Say believers. Believers. That's who he was talking to. He said, if you, I love Dake, I have a Dake Bible. 
Dake points out there's 1,595 ifs in the Bible. 1595. Every one of them presents a condition that if met, then you have what's on the other side of the if. So he says, if you abide in my word, you make your home in my word. Here in a little while, we'll dismiss, we'll eat, and then we'll all go home. Go back to where we came from. Some point this morning, or in the last little bit, it originated, you were at home, right? You go back home. Well, this is what you do. You go live life, but I tell you what, you'd be safe if every day you'd go back to the Word. In every situation. Jesus is speaking to Jews that believed Him. And He said, if you abide in my Word. So see, just because you believe doesn't mean you abide. You got that? You're catching this, aren't you? Just because, well, I believe that Jesus died and rose again. Good, good. Does that mean you're abiding in his word? So that's two separate things. He says, if you do that, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth. So to see the big if, look at the payday after this if. If you make the word your home, then you get to know the truth. And the truth will make you free. We've got to get to the place where God's word takes up residence in our heart, and we take up our residence in it. This is our life. The Word is literally where we live. And let me just say this. Maybe you've heard this before. There's no place like home. (laughs) You ever heard that? This sure enough beats Kansas. This even beats Amarillo to make the Word your home. Knowing these words should make a person want to shout. And some of you did. But what we're going to see today is that after these words that should make everyone that believes in Jesus shout, that's not what happened. It irritated this group. It outraged them to the point they wanted to kill Jesus. Now we know John 8, 31 and 32 as a church. I would say we've looked at that several times. I tried to look it up. I found four of my sermons since 2018 where I've actually pointed to this. I said, there's bound to be more than that. So there probably is. But in my notes, I found four different times it was actually in my notes. But I've referred to this dozens of times. Right? And most Christians, I don't remember not knowing this, most Christians have heard this. You'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. How many have heard that before? Yeah. Even the world kind of takes that little segment of it and kind of retweets that, if you know what I mean. They say, yeah, you know the truth, the truth will make you free. But you would think that would make everyone happy, but instead it downright ticked them off. Let's read, because most people don't know, verse 33 through 47, where we're going today. John 8, 33, they answered him, we're Abraham's descendants. And have never been in bondage to anyone. So they took offense at his word of saying, if you continue in my word, you'll know the truth. The truth will make you free. Because they thought they were free already. Because they understood, according to Abraham, if you're Abraham's seed, and you're heirs to that promise, that's some good promises. Now we know in Christ we're that. But check, check this out. They're standing there talking to Jesus. He's sitting there preaching like, wait a minute, we're Abraham's descendants. We've never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you'll be made free? See, they thought they were already free without continuing in the words of Jesus. Sounds like America today. The word, I don't know. Yeah, I was raised in it, but I don't have to continue in it. I mean, good night. I was sprinkled when I was a baby. My parents dedicated me to the Lord when I was a, you know, just an infant. That don't make you going to heaven. Can I just cut right to the chase? I don't mean you're going to sail through the pearly gates. It's because at one time you serve God. You've got to have a, an alive relationship with Him today. Accelerate Church has opened its doors to a second location located at 1300 East Central Avenue in Amarillo. The Word of God is thundering forth every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and every Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. from seasoned ministers here at Accelerate. 
If you live in the area, we invite you to join us for power-packed services each week and bring the entire family. We have something for the little ones too. God is building strong families and we would love for your family to join us. If it contradicts the rightly divided Word of God, it's not God. You know that. And some people have said, well, the Bible, speaking of contradictions, uh, the Bible contradicts itself. Uh, after further review, let me tell you what shows up. Yeah, the contradictions are actually in the life of the human, not the Bible. <laughs> Let, write this down. I don't have it on the screen. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. That's 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. If we can rightly divide the word, we can wrongly divide the word. So when I say this, well, the Bible contradicts itself. Then lots of people will be arrogant and bring that up to your life if you start following the Bible. They're going to. And you got to be prepared for that. Don't get your feelings hurt. Ooh, don't hide from the Bible. Just say, well, what is it? And then when they bring it up, have you ever seen this or this? If you don't know the answer, say, well, I don't know the answer to that. I'll figure it out. Because I'm studying to show myself approved unto God. A workman that does not need to be ashamed. See, most of the people that try to bring this up, there's contradictions in the Word. They're trying to do that to your shame. This is why you got to stay in this Word every day, though. Every day. Say it every day. Every day. I'm in the Word. In the word. Yeah. If we can rightly divide it, we can wrongly divide it. Let me tell you, that is a dirty shame. <laughs> You'll be ashamed if you wrongly divide the Word of God. So this is why today you came to a church, Accelerate here, where I'm the pastor. I'm not chasing some new revelation that you've never heard before. No. Instead, I'm going to stick with the highway of truth that the spiritual fathers in my life have already been down this road. They paved it for me, made it real easy. So I was happy when we landed in Nashville that when I got to drive to Cookville, there was a highway there. You may not know this, but Nashville's grown like crazy over the last few years. And so I was happy that they had a nice four-lane highway leaving there because there was traffic everywhere. I was glad we weren't condensed to just one lane, much less two lanes. We needed four until we got further out in the country. Are you listening to me? I didn't say, all right, y'all, hang on, kids. Leave the airport and make my own path to Cookville. How dumb can you get? Yet that's how Christians are living. They don't listen to the word and go that way. They'd rather chart their own path in life. And it's a highway to hell, you're on that way, and it's a bumpy ride as you get there. But if you'll follow the word, the path gets sweeter as the days go by. The path gets brighter. That crooked path you're on gets straighter. Praise God. I got to finish this John 8. I'm not getting very far today. Verse 44, but I am getting there somehow or another. You are of your father, the devil. He just came out and told him now. Y'all done went and did it. You keep kicking and getting irritated at Jesus when he's speaking the truth, pretty soon the truth's going to come out and just flat contradict you, flatten you like a Peter roller. You know what that is, don't you? That's what I always call them, Peter rollers. I don't know if that's really what they're called. Somebody probably knows the official name. You don't have to yell it out. All I know is those guys that have those big circle metal things they ride when they're making new pavement and they flatten that down. You don't want your toe underneath there. Do you? Unless you want to walk around like a duck. <laughs> Yeah, don't get your toes underneath that. It'll Peter roll them, right? That's what it'll psh, flatten it. Y'all following me in here? <laughs> Anybody following me? Yeah. And this what happened. You go against the truth one too many times. Next thing you know, psh, flat. He looks like you're of your father, the devil. Wait a minute. This is a crowd that believed in him. Remember? <laughs> I don't think when we read, the truth will make you free, and everybody quotes that, that we realize how irritated it made these guys that day. But it made them manifest who they were really of. And the desires of your father, that's what you want to do. See, he was a murderer from the beginning. Now, notice this part. And does not stand in the truth. 
See, you don't like the truth. That's something you and the devil have in common. He don't like to stand in the truth. Do you? I love to stand in the truth. Because, see, that's my, that's my belt buckle. That's, my, that's what keeps everything on my armor together is that my loins gird about with truth. You take the truth belt off, it all falls to nothing. Then you're facing the devil naked. And you know what? He's going to make you bloody and you're going to run away like the seven sons of Sceva. That's why you got to get armored up. Why do you think that the weapons of our warfare are mighty through God? Why do you think, finally, brethren, we ought to put on the whole armor of God so we can stand in the evil day? Why do you think that's written in the New Testament? Because you're in a fight. This isn't some recreation field. This is a fight you're in. You surrender to Jesus, that's the true fight club. You need to go over there and box somebody. You need to get your faith on. Get your gear on. Let's go. Look at this part. He doesn't stand in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources. Ooh, there's some insight. We've got to stop speaking from our perspective. People have told me, well, people's perspective is their reality. I know, and a lot of people's reality is not truth. All this stupidity. You do your truth, I do my truth. Boy, this is raging in our culture right now. But when you're speaking from your own resources and it's not on the basis of the word, you're in deep dewy. I approve this message whether you want to shout or not. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources. Do you get this? He's not basing on the word. He's basing on his own resources. So why are you saying what you say? Even if it's to yourself looking in the mirror. I'm ugly. Says who? Where'd you get that? That's your own resource. The word of God, that's a fountain that never runs dry right here. The very first time we came uh, to check out Accelerate, um, I believe my husband came with me that very first time. um, And I knew that that's what I wanted. I knew that's what... I knew that that's where I was called. Um, so me and the kids continued to come back um, every Sunday and every Wednesday. I remember women were thinking that I was this single mom because my husband wasn't there, but I remained faithful and I kept coming. I would say at that point our marriage was rocky. Um, I know that had we not stopped or started coming to church, I wouldn't be married today. That was something that I didn't ask him and wake him up every morning and say, you coming this time? Or, you know, Wednesday, you coming today? I just kept coming and I'll say, hey, we're going to church. See you later. And like I said, I remained faithful. I prayed for him. And it was like this one empty seat, like one day he's going to fill this seat. (laughs) So that morning was just like our normal chaotic Sunday morning, getting ready to go. I was in the kitchen, you know, getting the kids breakfast and stuff ready and walked back into my room where my husband was normally still asleep and he was up putting on a button up shirt and I remember him just, sorry, (laughs) I remember him buttoning his shirt up that morning and I knew he wasn't going to the gym because he was wearing a button up shirt. So I was like, well, where are you going? And he said, I'm coming with you to church. So I said, okay. And then I walked out, I was like, praise the Lord, he's coming. (laughs) You know, after my husband came to church with me um, after those months, I was, I think we were at home after church and I said, well, what caused you to come like with us to church? And he said, honestly, I've seen a change in you and I wanted what you have. I would say right around that time, um, I thought my marriage was over. And that statement alone was confirmation that it's not. And for him to see that change in me, because I kept showing up, now he keeps showing up. And my kids keep showing up. And now we have his little brother. I would say, like, my personal little motto for anything is keep showing up. And I continually showed up. I didn't care that people thought I was a single mom or that I didn't have a husband at home. But... One thing I would not do, Hold on. Um, don't nag them, just pray for them and they'll show up. And that's, that's another thing too, it, 
you showing up and being faithful is going to change the trajectory of everyone behind you and everyone after you because one little thing that I had in my mind to remain determined and to keep showing up, it changed my family. It brought me and my husband closer together. It has really strengthened our family. Like I said, we have custody of his little brother now. So now we're changing his trajectory and those after him. We have custody of my stepdaughter. We're changing the trajectory of her life. So you remaining faithful and diligent is gonna affect more than just you. See, if the Word makes you mad, the Word ticks you off, you've got to understand what's really going on. Well, what's really going on? Well, the Word is exposing the thoughts of the enemy. Let me say it like this. If your thoughts match Satan's thoughts, the Word will tick you off. Let me repeat that. If some of you are like, come again. Um, if your thoughts match Satan's thoughts, then the Word will tick you off. Which says, come out from among the world and be separate. Well, I disagree. Jesus was a friend of sinners. Who said that? The same group that was ticked off at him right here. <laughs> it's the same group. The Pharisees. He's a friend of sinners. Now Christians that are trying to be lawless say that. How ironic. Trying to resist being Pharisaical, they quote the Pharisees. How crazy can you get? This is why I've decided. As for me and my house, that includes you, by the way. We're going to live our lives on the basis of the word. No matter who it separates us from, no matter who it puts us with, I'm following the word. Even when it contradicts the reality I've seen up till now. I'm living my life on the basis of the word. Go to Luke 5. Let's look at one more place before we go today. Verse 1. Some of my favorite scriptures along with 66 other books. I should say 65 other since we're in Luke. Chapter 5, verse 1. So it was. As the multitude pressed about Jesus to hear the what? Oh, man, this is a powerful story. What was it that was of value right here? The Word of God. So he stood by the lake of Gennesaret, and he saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen, who the boats belonged to, had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's or Peter's, we could say. And he asked him, put out a little from the land. And as he sat down, he taught the multitudes from the boat. This is a very interesting story. So Peter is using his natural resource that he had, a boat, to help the Word of God come forth more effectively. So you need to know this. Anything you ever do to help the Word of God go out effectively, whether it's on television, on the Internet stream, whether it's via radio or right here in person, Handing someone a CD, telling someone about the website where they can listen for free. If you're getting the word out, God's going to bless you. So Jesus sat down, and he's teaching the multitudes from the boat. Verse 4, I'm in Luke chapter 5. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Now, it's so ironic, if you'll think for a minute, the Bible says they were cleaning the nets. So it's as if Jesus knows that or it wouldn't be recorded in the Bible. They're over there cleaning the nets. He goes and preaches his sermon. They could have got those things clean about the time he said amen. Right? <laughs> he said, uh, launch out into the deep. Let down your nets that you just cleaned for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, you got to catch this. We've toiled all night and caught nothing. I know you've heard this story. I've taught it before. But he says, nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Now, there's a difference in letting down your net and letting down the net because you have the word on it. 
There's a big difference in you wanting to be healed and popping a bunch of prescription pills and you saying, wait a minute, I've got the word on the fact that I've already been healed. I don't have to tell you the Holy Spirit was in what I just said. It's amazing. We'll go follow a doctor's orders. That's great. That's good. You're fighting the same thing. But a doctor is limited in his ability. God is not. The word has no limit. Mm. It don't matter what disease it is, whatever, not even named. They may not even have a name for it yet. And he's already paid for your healing. Glory to God. Somebody say, I'm healed. Glory to God. There's power. I'm telling you, there's power being released right now. If you need healing, raise your hand right now to God. Father, I thank you for a manifestation of healing. Complete, whole, every whit whole, according to the book of John. Every whit, every fiber of your being healed, whole by the stripes of Jesus. I rebuke sickness. I tell it to leave. And I thank you that in Jesus' name, healing will flow from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Somebody say, I receive that. Now listen, acting on the basis of the word is going to change everything. God just gave you an opportunity to do the same thing he gave Peter an opportunity to do. Act on the word. (laughs) Well, I already tried that. Nothing happened. That's why so many people do without. But you got to act on the basis of the word if you want to see everything change. If you don't like something that's going on in your life, act on the basis of the word. You don't like what's going on in your marriage, start acting on the basis of the word. You don't like the way the job's going, start showing up and doing it as unto the Lord and not to man. That's on the basis of the word. And I hate what I'm doing. Well, God will make a way out of it, but don't sit there and just walk off and dump on them as you leave. That ain't the way God wants his people to act. Once you do things the right way, God will promote you. Well, thanks again so much for tuning in with us to today's broadcast on the imminent return of Jesus. While that does conclude today's message, that does not conclude this message in its entirety. And if you would like to hear more, head over to AccelerateChurch.cc and click on the media tab. There you will find the rest of this series as well as other series preached by Pastor Jeremy. Or if you are in the Amarillo area, we would love to meet you in person. We're located at 4400 South Crockett Street here in Amarillo. Our service times are Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. If you're not in the area, we would still love to hear from you. You can write us at info at accelerate.church.cc. We would love to hear from you, pray with you, encourage you. You can even give us a call right here at 806 806- 418-8913. We can't wait to hear from you and see you on the next television broadcast.